What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. We are back today, and I'm, I'm surprised to be saying this. We're going to be trying to perform $2,000 worth of service on my 2021 Ram 3500 that I didn't think was going to need any real service other than basic maintenance for years to come. It turns out I was very, very wrong. So let me give you a little backstory on my 21 Ram 3500. It is obviously a Cummins. That's what this video is about. And I bought it used in January of this year, January of 2023, with 62,000 miles on the odometer. It now has like 75,000 miles on the odometer. All right, so I've put some miles on it and I got a notification on the dashboard that was unusual to me. It said, perform service. Well, I'm thinking... Well, it's probably about time for an oil change. I have yet to get a, a notification that it needs an oil change. And I have used this truck to haul cars all over the place. I've been back and forth to Indy. I mean, I put twelve to 14,000 miles on this truck, and it's never said it needed an oil change. So down the road, I go to the dealership. The dealer I bought it from, David Stanley, and they get back to me pretty quickly and inform me that it's about 20% away from needing an oil change, so we needed to do an oil change, but it also needed brake fluid flush, transfer case flush, transmission fluid, front and rear differential fluids, of course, the oil and oil filter, the brake fluid needs to be flushed, the wheels were out of alignment, and I just, I just put brand new tires on it, so the wheels needed to be aligned because they were out of spec, and the best part, it needs a crankcase ventilation filter, a CCV filter, never heard of this before, but it needs it, has to have it, and it needs an EGR cleaning service, all to the tune of about $4,000. I took my truck, oh, let's not forget the two fuel filters and the cabin air filter. There we go. With all of that, um, they wanted about $4,000. I went in for an oil change. I went in for an oil change that I thought was gonna cost me a couple hundred bucks, $160, $200. They came back wanting $4,000. And $2,000 of that, was just to clean the EGR valve and perform a crankcase ventilation service, meaning you have to take this filter out from under the uh, the valve cover, sort of, of the engine and pop a new one in. That's it. So I decided not a chance I'm going to pay $2,000 for something that we can do ourselves right here, and I can make a video showing some of you because you might be new to a, uh, a Ram, to a Cummins, and you might not know this service even exists, so we're going to try to do it ourselves. The parts, I bought genuine parts straight from the dealership, and they cost me just over $300. I still walked away paying over $800 for an oil change, two fuel filters, a cabin air filter, a front end alignment, and I think that's it. I think that's all I got, and it cost $800. Now, I'm not totally upset with the dealership. The truck needs the services, apparently, and, and they're just doing what they do. I am a little upset, though, that I bought the truck like six months ago. I've literally had the truck for six months, and already I had to put $1,200 worth of tires on it. I just spent $800 on service and another $300 for the parts to do the service that we're about to do today. Um, when I bought it, it had mismatched tires. It had an open recall for a fire hazard under the hood. Um, I'm, I'm a little disappointed about what I got for my $50,000. With that said, it's not the dealership's fault that I was ignorant to the things that were going to be coming up due on this truck as far as services are concerned. So it's got me thinking, maybe I might want to get rid of my $50,000 truck. I'm going to go ahead and do the service. I will. I'm going to do the service. We're going to do it on this video, but maybe I ought to get rid of it. Maybe I'd be better off sticking with something a little bit older, possibly pre-emissions. So there it is, the good old 6.7 Cummins turbo diesel, and it is time for the EGR cleaning service and the crankcase ventilation filter. I would highly recommend, if you're going to do this service yourself, just buy the parts from the dealership. That way, if anything ever goes wrong, you can go back and say, hey, these are your parts. And, and it wouldn't hurt to video it either, just so they can see that you did the job. Anyway, first step to all of this is going to be getting these little 8 millimeter bolts. I don't know how many there are. I think there are four. I think there's two. One up there, one up there, and one there, and one there. Four of these takes this little cover that covers the EGR valve. We're going to get that off. And then I think we'll probably focus on the crankcase ventilation filter first. Step number one, let's remove 
the oil dipstick and we will slide it out of the way somewhere safe. And then we will start with number one. And let's be very careful not to lose anything. Number two. Three. And number four. Here we go. With those four eight millimeters out of the way, this should just pop up and out. So here is our EGR valve, and I apologize for the flickering. There's nothing I can do about it. It's just the way the, the light is affecting the camera. But uh, you got an 11 millimeter V-band clamp right here. You got to take that off. Looks like one, two, probably two more on the other side, 10 millimeters, and a plug right here. And then you should be able to remove the EGR valve. And if you're wondering what you use to clean the EGR valve, well, they told me at the dealership, the tech came out and talked to me. He said, degreaser. He said, let it soak for about three hours in degreaser. But he said, be very, very cautious about getting any of the electrical components wet or getting degreaser on them because you could ruin the EGR valve. And on this 2021, this EGR valve looks totally different than what I saw on some of the other 6.7s. So uh, we're just gonna have to kind of wing it on this one. Next though, we're gonna focus on the CCV filter. We're gonna take these bolts right here out. We're gonna pop this off and underneath this cover, it looks like a valve cover, right? This is not a valve cover, okay? This is a cover that houses your crankcase ventilation filter. So let's pop all of these off. There's a couple right on the back here. You can see you've got a wiring harness sitting back there. So we're going to have to be very careful with that. Move that out of the way. Let's pop this off and underneath we will find our CCV filter. All right, let's get these off. Now, there are some wire harnesses uh, back here that you're going to have to pull off of these studs. It's super easy, guys. There's, there's, no, there's nothing to this. It's not a big deal. Just take your time and don't lose anything. We're almost done with this part. Now, we may need a swivel back here. Yeah, we're gonna need a swivel for those last two in the back. All right. And one more. Oh, that one's fun. There we go. Last one, there we go. All right, let's, uh, this should just pop off. No, oh, we got, hold on. What do we got stuck to this? There's something stuck to it. I thought this thing just came off, guys. I think I'm wrong. Let's take the old cap off. There it is. There it is. And then watch out. I knew this was gonna happen back here. We got something attached. It's got a wire harness and a hose. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna carefully kind of lift this up and try to move this out of the way where I don't break anything. I'm gonna use you guys to hold it up. And then this filter right down here, this is what we're working with right here, this big, uh, this big black filter. I'm gonna kind of hold this right here grab hold of this filter, and there it is. Just pops right out. Ooh, she's hot. Hot, hot, hot. Bang. Easy. So this is a Fleet Guard uh, Cummins filtration. There we go. Let me get off this chair before I uh, 
before I fall and hurt myself. All right, so old, brand new. You'll notice on the new one, it also says Fleet Guard and Cummins on it. Exactly the same. One thing you're gonna wanna do though is get a little bit of oil, lube up these O-rings before you go slapping this back in. It'll make things go together a whole lot easier. I'll tell you what, this one, this one weighs a ton and look how nasty that is. Just covered in oil and soot. It's pretty, pretty gross. And I'm telling you, this thing weighs a ton. So I'm sure it's full. This thing right here is super light. If we had a scale, man, this thing, <laughs> that thing right here, that's heavy. We're going to put some oil on those O-rings. We're going to pop it right back in. And there's your CCV service right there. It was as easy as that. Now, if you saw this little kit over here, this is for the GR valve. Just some extra gaskets. Um, two of them for sure that I'm going to need. There's one in here that they said I probably won't need. I can reuse the old one. But unfortunately, you're supposed to have two of each of these gaskets, and I've got two of one set, but only one of the round one. But the tech said I probably won't even need the round gasket, but he said for sure, change those, change these EGR base plate gaskets. Let's go ahead and take our new filter, which is oiled up on all the O-rings there. Nice and shiny. Let's get this back in. And uh, I'm just excited to get the damn light off my dash that supposedly is gonna end up putting this thing in limp mode because of this filter. Now, of course, before you go putting everything back together, double check where those O-rings are. Make sure you don't have anything stuck in there in those ports. Uh, you wouldn't wanna have anything in there, any debris that could tear up these, uh, these O-rings. You want everything to seal up nicely. So mine looks good, which means we should be able to get you guys back. Let's see if we can put you back into position here. Let's get, it's tough to do one-handed guys. Believe it or not, it, it is kind of hard to do this stuff one-handed. Let me uh, move this out the way. And let's just slide you guys down there. And hopefully, it just... There it is. Simple as that. Slide your cover back on. Make sure everything is uh, where it needs to be. Looks good. Just a matter of... Uh, Slapping in the bolts, putting on the filter cap or the filler cap. And that's a wrap for this. And we can move over to the EGR valve. All right, now that we've got that buttoned up, we can move on to the EGR valve. And to do this, a little pick is gonna go a long way to help you here. So on this side, at least on mine, maybe you can see the locking tab is right here. All right, there's a red tab. I can't hardly get to it from the back side. So what I did is I went through the front side here, right here in this little hole, I found the red tab and I just used my pick to push it out. Now that it's pushed out, I should, in theory, be able to grab it with my hand on the back side here, push it and hopefully, that's a tight fit, isn't it? Good Lord. Yeah, it's gonna need a little help. And what I meant by that was I had to do it two handed to get it off, it's, it's off now. There's the, uh, there's the locking tab. When you're done, don't forget to push it back in, this little red clip right here. Push that all the way in. That's the clip that you gotta get out, and then you push on it with your fingers and pull. It really helps to have two hands. So we'll move that out of the way, and we're not far from being done. We've got a 10 millimeter there, a 10 millimeter here, a 10 millimeter here, 10 millimeter here, and an 11 millimeter, I believe, on this V-band clamp. And then the whole EGR valve assembly, should pop right off. So do this however you want, but I'm gonna start with this V-band clamp right here. Watch out if you're gonna use an extension, be mindful of the battery, but it is an 11 millimeter, and I'm just gonna use a old school hand ratchet on this thing and loosen this clamp up until it's ready to slide off. It's kind of just a collar that sits on there. And uh, then four 10 millimeters, and we should be good to go. All right, now there is a little bit of a trick to this, and I want to show you, because if you don't know it's there, you're going to be fighting this thing for a long time. This is actually pretty nifty. I've never seen anything like this before, but uh, this is pretty cool. So on your on your V-band clamp, loosen it up. I mean, as far as you want to, really. Get it good and loose. But then you're going to push in on this backside, and look what happens when you push in on the stud on the back. Look at that. Yeah, like a little T-fitting. And when you go to tighten it back down, make sure you push the clamp in and get that T-fitting lock back down in there. Look at that. Push on the back, comes out, 
push it right back in, then you can tighten it up. That is pretty nifty. So we're gonna put that right there. We've got everything off now, except for the four 10 millimeter bolts. Let's get this thing off and see how bad it looks underneath. God, those are tight. Wow. Oh my goodness. Okay, just be aware of that. I don't know if anybody's ever been in here before, but good Lord, that's no joke. And definitely don't lose your bolts here. Oh, yeah. Those are pretty tight. So, we'll be sure to put them on tight. I'm going to put this thing back together. All right. This should be the end right here. We can pop this bad boy off. And, uh, oh, there it is. It doesn't look that bad. So, here is the EGR valve that supposedly is just so dirty and clogged up that you got to degrease it. I'm sorry, guys. I know it's hard for you to see, but I'm looking at it. That thing barely looks dirty at all. I mean, there's a little bit of soot. Other than that, though, this thing looks perfectly fine. It, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, there, this did not need to be done. This EGR portion absolutely did not need to be done. But here's the deal. I've already taken it apart. And I already bought the new gaskets for it. Turns out we only need those two rectangular flange gaskets and then that O-ring gasket, that round one. Looks like we only need one, so we're good there. So I guess it's time to fill it up. They said any type of degreaser is fine. They just warned to be very, very cautious of the electrical side of this. So uh, while we might put some degreaser in it, it'd probably be better to keep it at an angle to prevent any of it from going up into the sensor. They said that it would wreak absolute havoc. This really isn't a sensor as much as it is. It's got a worm gear drive. It's a motor to actuate the plunger for the EGR valve right there. So um, this takes a while. Go ahead and fill it up. Be careful with degreaser. And you can proceed to start cleaning the gasket material off of this and off of the engine as well. Make sure you don't get your gasket material inside your engine. I wouldn't recommend doing that. It could damage things. But uh, get everything cleaned up. Let this sit full of degreaser for about three hours. And then you can rinse it out. Be sure you let it dry completely before you put it back in your truck. All right. Well, the fun part is over. I've got that all cleaned up. And make sure you clean this up too. And what I did is I used a very soft bristled brush and I was very, very, very careful to stay away from the openings. I only used it on the edge. And I also used this razor blade to help scrape these gaskets off. They're pretty stuck on there and we do have the replacements for these. So that is all cleaned up. This is cleaned up. It's ready to go. I also made sure to use my, uh, my blower. Well, I don't know where it went, but anyway, I was just, I was just using, it. there it is, this right here to kind of, I made sure that I sprayed all around this, make sure I got everything off. And now for the fun part, we have the EGR valve soaking. And like I said, I talked to the Ram tech and he said degreaser is fine. He said, just any old degreaser is good. And I said, well, I got something better than any old degreaser, man. I got super clean, man. They sponsored the channel by sending me free products. So you can already see, look how it's foaming and look at all the crap coming out of it, man. Ooh. Yeah, she's working. She's definitely working. And don't forget this side, guys. You've got this whole side over here. Fill it up too. Look how dark that is. And this has only been soaking for... Man, maybe five minutes, maybe five minutes. When this thing comes off, it should look almost as good as new. Like I said, this is gonna take a while, guys. It's probably gonna be at least two to three hours of soaking. Then we gotta rinse it out with water. And then I'll use uh, my compressed air to try to fast forward the, driving, the drying time just a little bit. Then we can slap it back on. Let me make sure I got all the right gaskets before we go any further. So here's the receipt. It came out to $342.63. And we have a uh, we have two of these 68005184-AA gaskets for the EGR valve. Those are 40 bucks. We have the 68002433-AC, which is the breather. This breather, $255. 
dollars. No joke. And then we have one six eight zero two seven zero three five dash a b. That's your round gasket, and that one is twenty dollars, guys. So you're looking at this is honestly crazy. Forty dollars for these two gaskets. Forty dollars and twenty dollars for this little round one. Twenty bucks. Um, anyway, this is all that we need to put this back together. So it's totally up to it now. We're going to let it soak like we're supposed to. We'll come back when it's time to put it all back together. All right, it's been a couple hours. Kind of wanted to wait a little longer, but we're going to gently carry this over. Oops, I'm already spilling it. Ah, let's just see what comes out of it. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's an EGR valve, you know, if, of course it's going to be dirty, but you tell me, did, did that look like it was necessary to do a, like a full on EGR cleaning? I don't know, man. I don't, uh, I don't think so myself. Get it under some light. It, I mean, it definitely looks a hell of a lot better inside. For sure, and I would expect it to after all of that, but um, was it necessary? I don't know. You guys tell me what you think. Personally, I'm going to clean this up a little bit more because I think I can make it look even better. All right, it's been several hours. It's getting late. I dropped a ratchet up under the uh, hood there, and I just want to warn you, it's a... Uh, boy, <laughs> if you drop your ratchet... Way down there, good luck, because uh, I just tore my arm up getting it. So here it is. This is as good as I can show you with the GoPro, but not to worry, I took some pictures, so I'll throw those up right now so you can clearly see the inside. It looks pretty damn good. So now I'm ready to put it back on, and here's what I did. I put my little gaskets on the bottom here, and I'm using the screws to hold them in. There's little tangs on the gaskets, so you can put them on, put the screws in, put the bolts in, and should hold them together. And then you've got this one, this one little round one right here, which goes uh, over here when you put that, uh, that V-band uh, collar back over. So super simple, four 10 millimeter bolts, put this back on, throw the little V-band collar over it, tighten it all down, plug it in, reset the perform service message, and then we fire it up and we cross our fingers that everything was done right and the truck is happy, because if so, we just saved ourselves like $1,650 doing it ourselves. All right, we should be wrapping up with this clamp. I've already torqued down the... Uh, EGR valve, it's plugged in. I did make sure to clip the little red lock back in place where it belongs. And this should be... Yeah. That should be the end. Right there. I'm actually kind of excited about this because anytime you can save yourself, you know, $1,650 on something you can do yourself in just a few hours time, it's a good day. Now, I could put all the covers and everything back on and hope that everything's going to go right. But just in case, just in case something does not go right, I'm going to leave the covers off until we fire it up and reset the perform service message and make sure that everything is going to work the way it's supposed to. All right, I had to go inside and get the keys. And I did have to watch a little video that tells you how to reset that message. Listen, please, don't just reset the message without changing the parts, all right? It is not in the best interest of your truck to just reset the message and continue on down the road. You'll destroy your truck, you really will. So I think it's brake, brake, slowly depress the accelerator, slowly depress the accelerator. And that was supposed to reset the uh, perform service. So let's find out. Let's turn it off. Let's turn it back on. Does anything come on the screen that says perform service? I didn't see anything. 
So once again, I give you a quick rundown on what I found on YouTube. We'll, we'll know for sure if it works here when I start it up. Turn the ignition on, all the way on, not run, but turn the ignition on. Within 10 seconds, push the brake pedal twice. One, two, then slowly depress the accelerator pedal to the floor twice. And let off. And from what I understand, that's supposed to reset the perform service message after you've done the EGR cleaning and replaced your crankcase ventilation filter. So I just rewatched the video to make sure I did it right. And I wanna give a shout out to Campfire and Motors, 441,000 views on uh, resetting this perform service message. We're gonna turn it off now. And we're gonna cross our fingers and hope we did everything right. First start. And that perform service message will come on almost immediately, usually within just a few seconds of starting it, I get a permanent message on the dashboard that says perform service. So far, I'm not seeing it. Sounds good. <laughs> it sounds good. And no message on the dash. Perfect. Come back here to the exhaust. How's she sounding? Nice and quiet. I'm gonna crack this door just a little bit. Make sure we don't suffocate in here. I'll leave it about like that. Let's come up to the engine bay. We'll double check a few things. Make sure we don't have any leaks. Make sure everything looks like it's doing what it's supposed to. I'm going to call that a win, guys. That is perfect. Let me put that uh, cover back on, and I guess we'll take it for a test drive. And as long as nothing goes wrong, we're going to call this a wrap. All right, she is buttoned up. Fired up. The brake is off. Double check on that message one more time. Nope. Perfect. Time to take her on a little test drive then. Let's see how she does. I have no doubt that everything's gonna be exactly the way it's supposed to be. Like I said, this didn't take all that long, guys. I mean, the majority of your time is spent waiting for that cleaning solution to do its job and waiting for everything to dry out when you're done. She sounds just as good as she ever has. problem running like a top I'm just gonna drive it a couple miles not gonna go very far with it just take it a few miles turn around come back and then we're gonna call this a success well I guess we can call that successful wasn't too complicated didn't take a whole lot of time I took it out on its little ride, it did absolutely great. I mean, I'll be honest with you, it doesn't feel any different than it did before, but uh, I guess as long as the truck is happy, that's all that matters. I consider this a job well done and not something that needed to be done by a dealer. Let's pop the hood real quick. Take one last look around under there. Everything sounds good. Everything looks good. All right. Well, I think that's a wrap, guys. We did it. So the video may have started out a little bit sour. I was a little upset about the cost of this service that I was not prepared for, but ultimately, 
it ended on a positive note, right, Roxy? It did. It ended on a positive note, didn't it, sweetheart? Yes, it did. Yes, it did. We got it done, didn't we? And we saved almost $2,000 doing it ourselves. Roxy helped. She was along for every step of the way, guys. I could not have done this without this dog. Um, I'm still a little... I'm still a little upset uh, that a truck that I've only had for six months uh, needed this much servicing. I, I feel like if it's a 65,000 mile service or whatever the, the, the exact number is, uh, and I bought it with 62, 63,000 miles on it, I feel like couldn't the dealership have gone ahead and taken care of that going, hey, we know that, you know, this guy's going to have to come back in just a few thousand miles and pay five thousand dollars for all these services i guess that's business though right it's 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 business because i'm gonna have to come back and pay all that money to the dealership to do all that work so i mean i get it it makes sense from a business perspective i completely understand it but it doesn't piss me off any less i should have known better i should have done more research and i should have seen this coming and again i'm not blaming the dealership for it you know it's it's business uh but i blame myself for not doing more research so i highly recommend before you go buying a truck that's got oh i don't know 60 70 000 miles you think hey i'm getting a low mileage diesel and you are but you better check the manufacturer not just not just ram any manufacturer you better check to find out what services are about to come up and creep up and bite you in the rear. You might find out you're better off buying one with a little more mileage. Maybe you're better off buying a brand new one. I, I, I don't know. Do whatever works best for you. But this video was mainly about doing it ourselves. DIY on the 6.7 Cummins, man. And I had a good time aside from tearing up this arm. But that's my own fault again for dropping the ratchet. Um, it was fun to get under the hood of my truck and actually do some work on it myself and share the experience with you guys. And hopefully somebody out there watches this video and says, hey, man, I don't want to pay $2,000 to the dealership. I'm going to do this myself. Go get you those parts. You'll spend a few hundred bucks and take a few hours of your day. Get out there and enjoy yourself. Work on your truck and have fun because at the end of the day, that is what it's all about. I want you guys to drop a comment below and tell me what you think, though, because here's one more time and I'm going to get out of here. I'm still considering getting rid of the truck because I'm sitting here thinking I pay $1,100 a month for the truck, probably another two or $300 for insurance. I have no idea what I pay for insurance. I've got so many cars, but I would guess two to $300 a month. So let's say 200 so we're paying about $1,300 a month for this truck, but it needs it needed $5,000 worth of service. To me, that's just mind-boggling, paying that much per month and still having to pay out that much for service. I feel like I could go out and buy a $10,000 diesel truck, right? In fact, I'm looking at one right now. It's a 2003 Ram 2500. It's got a flatbed, which I, I think the flatbeds are kind of cool. Not very useful, but they're cool looking. Single rear wheel, Cummins, of course. And it's got no emissions. You know, it doesn't come with emissions. It doesn't have any of that SCR, DEF, EGR. It's got nothing. It's just a bare bones. It's got like 500 foot pounds of torque. It's got plenty of normal creature comforts and a decent interior that, you know, you could live with today. And it's 10 grand, $10,000. I could have that. And I'm thinking for the $1,150 I pay a month for this truck, plus insurance, right around $1,300 a month for this truck. Um, my insurance would go down substantially on an older truck because it's not worth as much. And instead of paying $1,150 a month for a truck, I wouldn't be paying anything because it'd be cash money. It'd be paid for. And let's say I do blow it. Let's say the Cummins pops, right? And you need a motor. How much is a Cummins? $12,000? $12,000? That's one year's worth of payments on this truck. One One year. So for one year's payments, I could buy a whole new Cummins engine, and then I would have, what, another 20 years worth of service out of it? It's kind of got me thinking, man, is newer really better? I don't, I'm starting to think, I'm starting to think my mentality has been wrong this whole time. Maybe buying something that's already depreciated and just maintaining it is better. Drop your comments below and tell me what you think. Would you keep the 21 Ram 3500? Paying those monthly payments? Scott, I'll be paying on this thing for another six years, guys. Six and a half years. Or go buy something for cash and fix what needs fixed and drive it. Till next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I look forward to seeing you all again very soon in the next one.